National Republican Party will get behind my efforts, and they will, they will look at this as a seat that they want to win and that they want to see a real Republican in that seat. Um, but, you know, I think, I think I'm going to be able to say, I think I'm going to raise enough money so that it's not going to be an issue. I'll be able to be competitive, even if I'm not going to spend, I think she's now saying $50 million or something she's going to spend uh, on this campaign. So, you know, that might be a little bit of overkill, and maybe it'll backfire at some point. Maybe people will look at it as, you know, trying to buy the, buy the seat, and uh, they might not want to, you know, put it up for sale. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have a question. I'd like to know how you stand on this. Uh, I think one of the underlying problems in our financial uh, situation uh, that caused it to pyramid is that this country is allowing people who didn't fund its growth to come to our country and suck out our prosperity. In other words, L.A. County 47% of the employment in L.A. County are illegal immigrants who get paid off the books and don't pay into the system. Look what happened to California, to Los Angeles. Businesses moving out, they're going to Nevada, a no-tax state. The same thing happens in New York. I live in New Canaan, Connecticut. When I walk my dog, or walk my dog, I could say that the majority of people working for contractors and or landscaping are being paid because they're not legal, they're not in the system, and therefore they're taking our resources and not contributing back. And one thing I've analyzed is that you could say that certain people earn and give back to the economy, but that's not true because the majority of the money that they earn they send back home out of the United States of America. Well, I'd what, say that, that well, in, I, could I just say one more thing? Now, it's pretty in your face because I take the train out of New Canaan. However, there are times that I leave a client in Stanford and I go to the Stanford train station in the morning and we have all these unemployed American people living in Fairfield County and I see these illegals lining up right in front of the eyes of the MTA police and the Stanford police sitting in their patrol cars looking at these people getting picked up by the contractors and nothing's done. I mean, what, what are your feelings on that? Well, I mean, to, to move away from just the immigration issue and what we should do about legal versus illegal immigration, to address your underlying economic question is that are illegal immigrants, are they hurting our economy or are they helping it? I mean, if, if people are working and contributing their labor, right, we're getting value. Like labor is, it has value. A lot of the jobs that illegal immigrants are performing, if they weren't here, either they wouldn't be being performed at all, or they would, they would be too expensive to actually afford to pay for them. You know, capital and labor are going to go to where they're treated best. Unfortunately, your anger needs to be at the government that is undermining the productivity of our businesses. You know, the reason that maybe they have to go to the illegal labor force is they can't afford the legal labor because of all the impediments that have been placed on it, because of all the, the occupational laws and, the, and, 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 and various employment taxes and legal issues that have been placed on, on American employers, they, they can't operate profitably if they have to do it within this system. And they end up going uh, to th this other labor market that's the only way to stay in business. There are a lot of, you know, in California, I mean, there's a whole huge workforce there, uh, illegal immigrants, certainly, you know, people in, 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 in domestic where there's no way they can afford people uh, if they had to go through the burdens that, that the government places. We have to understand that you know, we're going to chase capital out of the country. You know, nothing keeps it here. You know, it's going to go where it's treated best. And if we want businesses to grow in this country, we need the entrepreneur, the people who are risking their capital and who are working hard, and the business owners, they work long hours, they work weekends to get started, they work harder than anybody else. They need to be able to make a profit. They can't have it taxed away by the government, and they can't be burdened by all sorts of rules and regulations that make them so uncompetitive. I mean, one of the reasons that so much of our businesses, so much of our manufacturing has been moved offshore is because we can't do it profitably in this country anymore. Yet we have millions and millions of people who are unemployed. Why do we have to go to other countries to, to, to make stuff? Because the government has made it impossible to make things profitably in this country. So we've got we to stop that. We've got to understand what the government is doing 
to undermine our economy. And what bothers me is not necessarily just because there are illegal immigrants coming in, but you've got plenty of Americans who could be working, who aren't working, who are just living off the government dole, but if that wasn't there and the government stopped you know, penalizing our businesses and making them unprofitable, you know, they would be able to enter the workforce. We'd have the benefit of their labor. Now, I, I, I still think that if you had them pay their fair share, and, and but you're my, talking about their fair share. You mean have, if we had them pay taxes? Yeah, and five percent. But the why do we want them if they pay taxes? Five percent of the taxes we yeah, but off. if they pay taxes, the government would just waste that money along with all the rest. I don't want to spend money to Washington. I want to leave it in the private sector. Oh, I agree. With you. So I'm not upset that they're. You're saying that you think they should be paying taxes. I want everybody else to pay less taxes. No, I'm saying legalize <laughs> the system. We can talk about this all night, and we're not going to do that. So thank you for that. Sure. So. Any last questions? Last question. Uh, you kind of touched on it before. Chris got in Congress for 30 plus years. How do you feel about term limits in Congress? Well, I'm in favor of them. I mean, I wish we had term limits. I mean, you know, I mean, I, the whole idea, I think, behind Congress and when our founding fathers first established it, and of course, you know, when they established it, the senators didn't even run for election. They were appointed by the state legislatures. But the congressmen were up every two years. But the whole idea was that we would have a citizen legislature that people would take time out from their lives, go to Congress for a while, and then leave. You know, they didn't, they didn't believe in, 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 in royalty or titles of nobility, but in fact, we've created a noble class. I mean, Chris Dodd might as well be in a House of Lords, as far as I'm concerned. He practically inherited his title from his father. And they, they stay in Congress their whole lives. They, they act like they're above everybody else. They're exempted from all the laws they write. They never have to live with it. I think people that go to Congress should have to know that the rules that they pass are going to are going to apply to them when they leave, and I don't know, you know, what my term limit is going to be. I'm hoping I can accomplish this job and get this done in one term. Six years seems like an awful long time to me, and you know, I'm not trying to change careers. I'm not, you know, saying that I'm finished being a private citizen. I don't want to be in, in the in the in the brokerage business anymore. That I just want to be in the Senate. The problem is the people who are in the Senate right now have not done their job because they are career politicians, they're incapable of doing anything but getting reelected. And so I think more people like me need to go to government to try to clean up this mess. And I'm hoping that if I can win in 2010, that it'll be a, a, a beacon to other candidates around the country for 2012 that we can not only retake Congress, but we need to, not, we need to get rid of Barack Obama in a landslide. We have to repudiate everything he stands for. And we have to rebuild the credibility of a Republican name that has been so damaged during the past eight years when we kept pursuing these big government policies under this free market conservative banner. You know, we need to, you know, we need to understand you know, what it means to be a Republican and, and elect people. You know, a lot, you know, people voted Republican for a long time and, they, and people run and they promise smaller government. But the minute they get in office and they get into that Washington establishment, all they do is grow government. And we need people that are there that are committed. All they do is grow government. And we need people that are there that are committed to actually executing these promises, to actually go there and try to dismantle this gigantic federal government that has grown like a cancer and that is actually destroying uh, the economic body of the country.